Hi guys, it's Clarice and welcome to my YouTube channel. It's January 2021 and I am doing a series of videos tackling uh, composing something pretty with florals. So if you are just a uh, beginner in watercolor and are unsure where to start, check out these next few videos and have some fun. Hey guys, so we are ready to begin in Jan with our new series of uh, composing a pretty composition while learning the basics of watercolor. So this was the digital planner that came with the calendar uh, as a freebie and I have it printed out and I've already kind of marked out what I'm going to be doing. Um, but I'll be adding more detail to this later. So for those of you who have this, I hope you're having a lot of fun with this. Uh, and today we are going to be tackling leaves. So join me. So in this first part, we are going to be doing something very, very, very basic and something that I find a lot of people are having issues with, and that is leaves. Um, so I'm just going to run through my supply list or the products I'm using before we uh, move ahead. Um, for these, I am going to be using my Escada brush in the number two. It's just got a fine tip and I, it's new and I like using it, so it's my newest toy. Um, I'm also going to be using the a number eight silver black velvet and I will also use the Da Vinci number one and it's a mop brush. For colors, I am going to be using um, give me one second. My St. Petersburg uh, yellowish green and then the turquoise or what I, I actually thought this was indigo but apparently it looks like a turquoise or something else. Now the story with these, uh, I know I keep repeating myself but as new people join in on videos I'm just going to tell you I try my best to get you the names of the colors. Unfortunately these are my favorite colors to use and when I first purchased them I did not uh, mark the names and they don't have any numbers that I can look back on. So literally I think I know the name and then someone else corrects me. So my apologies guys but uh, my hope is that you don't rely on me naming um, the I guess the names of the colors but you kind of use the colors you have on hand as well. That's my constant encouragement as you grow um, and grow as a painter and then just have fun with this. You don't need to get exact colors. All right, so we're gonna start. Uh, oh, this is like a dark brown that I have. I believe this is a sepia, but I'm just gonna keep this uh, on the side if I wanna mix it in with the yellowish green. So we have that. I have my palette ready. So I have my palette ready and I'm going to start mixing some color. So to start off, I'm going to start off with uh, using the generous number eight to get some color on here. So I'm just getting color directly from my little palette. Don't put it on your piece of paper. Uh, this is Canson watercolor paper. I think I mentioned it previously. Uh, I'm just doing this so that I don't have to take the sheet off the screen and then put it back on. So this is what that green looks like. Um, and now I'm going to mix it in with some of that brown that I was mentioning. And then I will put some blue as well and get a different variation. So mixing some of that brown here and it gives us a nice richer green. Not as bright as that because I don't like I don't really like the bright colors. If you like bright colors, that's entirely up to you. Please feel free to use it. I like a nice variation of different hues happening. So I use uh, two or three different greens and try and mix some additional colors in there to kind of add some interesting, uh, I guess, interesting looks to the painting. Um, Next, I'm going to add some of the turquoise blue that I was mentioning, or the 
indigo, whichever you are using right now. Something to give us some nice variations of color on our palette. All right, so we have this. Uh, just gonna add a tad more of the green in here, just so it's not too much of a brown green, but more of a green green. There we go. Hope that makes sense to you guys. So I have some colors on here, and now it's easy for me to sort of just dip and create uh, our leaves. So we're gonna start. To give you an idea, this is uh, typically what we are going to be doing and kind of just going along, creating a pretty pattern and just a lot of repetition in different sizes and also consistencies. So this video is essentially to give you the hang of creating leaves, but also kind of mixing and getting different hues with also different uh, water consistencies to see the lightness um, and what effects you can get when you kind of, you know, go along using different um, um, water to uh, color ratios. So have fun with it uh, and let's create something pretty. So I'm gonna start off by using my number eight and I will pick a corner to sort of start using, um, doing the leaves. And um, let's pick the left corner here. All right, so I'm just gonna get some color, my brush, and the way we do leaves is pretty much using, there's a couple of different ways, but this is something that will be on repetition so that we can kind of repeat and learn and create good leaves. So I'm gonna start using the tip and then pressing down and trailing off. And then again, I'm gonna get a little more color I'm going to create the next side, pressing down, tapering off. And you can kind of perfect it by adding more color to the side. Now what I want to do as I go along is I want to dip the tip in a slightly different color. So say for, for instance the blue. And I want to create the same thing using the same motions we've just done, but trying to keep white space in between the two. So just like that. And then you can also dip the tip in water and kind of create, keep on creating the same thing that we've been doing. Touching what we've just done and give it some direction. So you see how when you touch something that already has color, it kind of gives you a nice seeping in look and feel and that's what creates that nice dreamy look. So I'm just gonna do a couple of these in this um, size and then we're kind of going to change brushes to create another size uh, of leaves. So I'm going to do one going up this way and press down and drag away. I'm going to take some of the blue this time doing the same motion and kind of tapering off to the end. I'm going to take some of that darker I'll just do one more in this direction and then we can do smaller ones so one, two, and I'm just perfecting the edges. So there we go, we have that. Uh, now I'm gonna kind of go in with this brush and just get some smaller, lighter looking ones happening. So the smaller brushes I find are a lot easier. So just pressing down, pulling away. And then if you want lighter ones happening in the side, dip the tip in water, press down once, twice, and you have your nice pretty leaf. Keep using different colors as we go along because the whole point is to practice, but also at the same time, create some nice pretty artwork that could be considered maybe a wall hanging if you wish. Um, give it some motion, um, mix in different uh, consistencies of water and color, get used to the medium if you have never uh, used this before, see what happens when you go um, add a leaf next to one that is already damp, uh, do you like 
the blend that happens. Do you like these colors that you're blending? Do you want to try a different color? This is your chance to kind of be repetitive in a motion. Um, and practice makes perfect or close to it. But it also makes you realize what you like and what you don't like. So this is the whole point of this exercise. It's super simple, but um, because it's just literally you pressing down once, twice, and then making an effort to leave some white space in between. So it's a couple of different things that I'm asking you to do here. Uh, but trust me, when you're finished, uh, you will like the results. So keep going and keep creating. And I'm going to keep on doing this um, for a couple more strands. Uh, and then what you can also do is, before it gets too dry, you can attach these. So I'm going to give them some attachments. So I'm adding stems. And I'm and this gives it more of a uh, motion feel to it because now it looks like they're all flowing from one direction. So here you go with the stems or these leaves. And that one's kind of off to the back. So we're going to continue doing this and let's see how we kind of go. What I also want to say before I end off is that try and do different, um, I guess, different directions for the leaves. So if you want the leaf to kind of flow this way, so what, what does that look like using the same motion? So like you're pressing down and then like going this way. And then the second one, you're probably starting from the top and then doing this and then tapering it down. So, so it looks like it's doing this kind of S or like a little twirl happening. Um, so try a couple of different things. Um, the whole point is to make sure that you are getting this, this um, action, almost like muscle memory on your hand. Uh, and practice is the only thing that will help you do that. So keep at it. And yeah, keep at it. So I'm going to continue um, doing my own thing with this. And we will make that a um, time lapse. So you can see exactly what you can do with it. But um, here we go. Okay, so this is what we are, what we've come up with after that little time lapse. Now, I don't want to make the time lapse too long, but you get the idea of what we are trying to do here. It's essentially just creating a lot of flow using the same motions we've done and using different um, sizing of brushes and also different color variations and water consistencies. Um, I'm just going to end off by showing you um, the difference when we create the same or do the same motion using the mop brush because this gives you a different kind of look and feel for your leaves altogether. So I'm just going to add a couple uh, around here using the color that I have mixed and I am going to um, so this the mop brush holds a lot of water so you have to be careful when using it because it could pull up on your paper so just make sure you kind of if you're not used to it, just make sure you kind of dab off most of the water off um, and just get some color. And we're going to do the, the, the exact same motion to create some leaves now. Um, oops, my palette. So I'm just going to create one that's kind of going off to the top. And so exactly the same motion. I'm going to start with the tip, pressing down and then trailing off. And you see how it kind of gives you a perfect leaf. You don't even, you most likely don't even need to do another stroke, but I'm going to show you what it looks like if you do another stroke.
so you get a nice thicker leaf and you can just extend the bottom or leave it as is it's entirely up to you it's a loose style of painting and so I don't necessarily focus on the details like connection and whatnot so you can see some are connected some are not uh, I've just dipped the tip in some water because I want the next leaf to be a lot fainter so pressing down and just kind of going off you can barely see it but it is there and that's uh, the smoothening effect that you kind of give when you want something to look a little more in the background or kind of not too much of focus I will create one more or a couple here and then we can end off so just trailing down pressing and trailing down and then I'll add one more here the thing with the mop brush is uh, because it's so thick that it's kind of harder to maintain the um, sizing to keep it small which is why I like brushes like the number two or even the number four silver black velvet when doing leaves so that it doesn't overpower the florals. And as we do the next couple of videos uh, getting into florals and composition, you will see what I mean by that. So I'm just going to add one more here because I do want to make this like a nice pretty piece of artwork. And then I will leave it as is and allow you guys to kind of go on and have your own fun uh, practicing our leaves. So thanks so much guys for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this first video of um, going back to basics and learning how to compose and mix color and fade things off and whatnot. Practice is the key, uh, which is why I created something uh, like this, so you guys can focus on the tiny details that'll eventually allow you to create something a lot more detailed and like a full composition. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share in your social media circles, and uh, send me your work on Instagram and Facebook. I love seeing your work, so if you come up with something super pretty and flowy with the leaves, show it to me. I'd love to see it. Thanks guys. We'll chat soon. Bye.